Hello, I am Arthur Koopmans and welcome to my second watercolor demonstration. And today I'm going to show you how I made this painting of a beautiful city in the Netherlands from this reference photo. And to do that I had to invent my own light. And I will show you how we can do that. So here on the left we have our reference photo. I took this photo during a boat trip through the province of North Holland in the Netherlands. And this is Haarlem, the provincial capital. And what you see here is Haarlem's historical market square. And on the photo you can see lots of people on the terraces enjoying a late summer evening. And the building with the tall tower is the old city hall. Because there is this large vertical tower in the photo, I decided to go for a portrait composition. And as you see here on the right, this was the original reference photo in landscape format. It's a nice photo, but I had one problem with it. It's a bit dark. All of the scene is shrouded in shadows, because by then the sun was already very low. It's maybe not so bad, but I wanted to introduce a little more light into this scene. So, what we are going to do for this painting is to invent our own light. And with this video I want to show you that you don't have to follow the reference photo exactly, but you can change the light to make it suit your painting. So, how do we do this? First, let's take a look at the light in the photo. When we look at the old city hall, it forms a sort of silhouette. Which is kind of nice. And to the right of that there is a building further in the background. That building is receiving a little bit more sunlight. And it's actually the lightest part of the scene, save for the sky. And further to the right we have another building that is in the shadow. I do like this composition wise because it leaves a sort of opening in the middle which creates more depth in our painting. And then we have the middle ground area with all the terraces, the people and the parasols. This is the area of the painting where I want the viewer to focus on. Because this is the central stage of the painting with the actors, as Joseph Sabukvich puts it. The problem here is that it is all in shadow, like the rest of the scene. There is no separation between background, middle ground and foreground, because all of it is equally dark. So what I want to do is to separate the foreground from the middle ground by creating a streak of sunlight between the two. I also want to place part of the terrace area in the sunlight. This will create extra light dark contrast in the middle ground, which helps to make that area of the painting our main focus. But introducing more light into the painting means that the shadow areas may also become a bit lighter. Because part of the sunlight that falls onto the ground bounces back up towards the buildings. And because this is warm evening light, it gives the shadows a warmer, more orangey color. So you can keep the shadow areas darker to add more drama to the painting, but I went for a more sunnier and colorful look to give the impression that it is still earlier in the evening. And what I also want to do is to create a little more light on the building on the right. But at the same time I want to preserve part of its shadow, as if the shadow from another building partly covers the building. When making all these changes the trick is to make it look realistic. The lighting doesn't have to be 100% correct as long as it looks good. We do however have to be consistent and use the light source that is implied in the photo. So when you look at the building in the middle you can see that the light is coming from the left because that side is lighter. And while the sun is not visible in this photo we know it should be somewhere to the left. So if you want to introduce more light in the midground then that light will be coming from the left. So this means we can also make the left side of the city hall lighter than the rest of the building. And it also means that things such as people and parasols will receive light from the left and the right side will be in shadow. And a stronger light source also means that these things will produce cast shadows on the ground that point to the right. 
it would be a bit boring to make these shadows completely horizontal, so we will let them go towards the bottom right, matching the perspective lines of the facade of the city hall. So all of this is part of the planning phase that you do before you begin the painting. It also helps to create value studies first to test your ideas out. Now I'm using a black and white uh, e-ink monitor, so that makes any reference photo for me a sort of value study by itself. But if you have the patience to do so, I highly recommend you to do this. Uh, to make these value studies, especially if you are going to make a lot of changes to the photo, as we are doing now. Okay, as you can see, the drawing is coming along nicely. So I have divided the photo into a 3x4 grid, and I'm using a scale divider and pencil to make the drawing. So this is a 4B pencil, um, a 2B, 3B, 4B, it's all fine. Um, with 4B, um, you have slightly more risk that you smudge the pencil uh, of, on your paper. Um, so usually I use uh, 2B pencils. Um, especially for detailed architectural paintings, I want to have an accurate drawing. So with the skill divider, I can make a few measurements at key points in a photo. And then I turn the skill divider upside down and place these points on the paper, but on a larger scale, because the paper is at least twice the size of my photo. So I'm making this sketch detailed, but it is wise not to make your drawing too tight. So keep your drawing slightly loose, but still accurate. And believe me, painting is a lot more fun when your drawing leaves a bit more to the imagination. You can do the rest with your brush. So the drawing is almost finished now, so let's go to the painting phase. Alright, now is the time that the real fun begins. So making the drawing is a nice way to get more familiar with your subject, but personally I enjoy the painting phase more. So we are starting this painting out with creating a wash for the sky. And we want that nice warm evening glow, but I'm keeping the sky wash fairly light. So first I'm going to wet the bottom part of the sky with a big mop brush. Then I put in a bit of yellow ochre in the bottom to make the bottom part of the sky warmer. And above that I add some cerulean blue and let that mix with the ochre. And above that I put in some cobalt blue for the upper part of the sky. You can also do this in reverse order, that's fine too. I do usually work from top to bottom, but I wanted to have that warm glow in the sky first. And be careful not to add too much water to the wash or it might come streaming down the paper. This wash is quite diluted already. I do think it's better if the sky errs a bit more to the light side than too much to the dark side. Because at least when it's very light it still has a lot of luminosity in it. So now we're getting into the first big wash. I've let the sky wash dry completely, so we can now paint the buildings without them dissolving into the sky. Some watercolor painters paint the buildings in while the sky is still wet, so that the two bleed into each other. And that's totally fine too, it just depends on which style you are painting in. So the sky in this scene is very clear and the darker buildings have these sharp silhouettes, and I want to keep those in my painting. Now, this first wash will determine mostly the lighter colors in the painting, and we can then in a later wash paint over that in increasingly dark layers. There are multiple ways to start your painting, but I started here with the lightest part, and that is the building in the middle. At this stage you don't need to worry too much about the accuracy of things, because this first wash will dry up very light. If I, if I wanted to, I 
I could also have started with the building on the left and then simply working my way from left to right, treating these buildings as one big shape. Uh, simplifying ways in that manner is actually something that I am working towards doing more, but there's just so much beautiful architectural details, all these ornaments. It, uh, it's hard not to paint all those. It is like you are reverse engineering all these old buildings and yeah, let's just go for it. So this first wash will not only be lighter, but it will also be a bit warmer. And before you start your painting, it is useful to determine which colors you are going to use. So for this painting, I'm mostly using yellow ochre and cadmium orange for the warm highlights and those warm evening colors. I also use a touch of cadmium yellow and Indian yellow for the trees. And for the darker colors, I use a lot of burnt sienna and also cobalt blue and ultramarine blue to create these shadow colors. And you can then play with the ratio of uh, warm to cool pigments to get the result that you want. And so you can get create these nice gradients from, from cool to warm. Because it, you, do, you don't want these, these flat, even washes that you want to create some interest. And gradients are a great way to do that. And there's a lot of those in nature. So for the most part, I use this nice big mop brush to lay in the colors. I using, use a big brush to cover these large areas, but be careful with the architectural details. As you can see here, I am painting the facade of the old city hall in a bit darker colors already. But I'm still keeping the colors warm because of all that warm bounce light coming mainly from the ground, but also coming from other buildings. And here I switch to a lightly smaller round brush. Um, it's a Raphael. And with the smaller brush, I can paint around the parasols and the people in the midground. If you can do it, then by all means, you can keep using your larger brush when doing this. But be careful; you don't want to use the you don't want to lose those highlights. So, because I am basically cutting this painting in half by keeping the midground separated from the foreground. I can, instead of uh, doing the foreground first, I can focus further on these buildings. So here I am painting the steeple, still with this smaller Raphael brush. And this steeple is a bit further away, so I can make it a bit more atmospheric. There's also not much highlight in it, so I can basically treated like a sort of silhouette and I put in some yellow ochre, some burnt sienna, some blues, maybe some burnt umber but you, you've got to be careful not to put too much into one mix because it can get money but by using some extra pigments you can make a single wash more lively as long as you don't pre-mix everything, but allow to mix these different colors to, to mix on the paper. Most of the buildings are now covered. Let us now zoom out a bit and continue working on the bigger picture. I want this streak of light on the ground in the middle of the marketplace. So I'm grabbing some cadmium orange and I dilute it with enough water to keep it nice and light. And again, I'm painting around the people on the terraces and I also leave out the parasols. And a touch of paint on the little pointy tower of the building in the middle. I'm painting the brighter part first and let that dry and then I will come back and paint the shadow part later. We haven't covered uh, all of the painting in one wash yet, so 
let's finish that by filling in the foreground area. Now I'm working on this building on the left. I'm still keeping things fairly light. Now I add in some of these brick chimneys on the city hall. They are quite reddish in color because they are getting some of the last sunlight. So I'm using some burnt sienna in the mixture to get that red brick color. So I am kind of jumping from one part of the painting to the next. Maybe that's because of uh, an attention disorder, but it's also true that there's a lot of things happening in this painting and it can be hard to cover that all in one wash while still keeping that level of accuracy and detail. Um, plus I'm inventing my own light here so I'm a bit extra careful with how I should paint these different areas. And still with my Raphael brush I paint in some of the trees now. So I mainly use cadmium yellow for the highlights but I add some Indian yellow as well to add some extra warmth. And these trees will give a nice break from all these warm orange brown colors that you see everywhere. Uh, there are multiple ways you can approach painting these trees but what I'm doing here is making a green mixture and then grab some yellow for the highlights and then I put that into the green wash and let that mix a bit on the paper. So I've added some extra shadow to the city hall and now I'm going to paint in the parasols. So here in Holland and probably elsewhere as well I noticed that a lot of these restaurant parasols are black or dark grey in color. And that's of course perfectly fine but when I make these parasols black or dark grey in my painting it looks kind of somber I think. Especially when there's so much sunlight in this painting. So we're going to solve that by simply changing their color to something more light and colorful. So you really don't need to copy your reference photo. So I'm going to make the parasol on the left a sort of light blue. And the one next to that will be yellow or orange. And the one next to that will be bright red. And these three primary colors also come back in the rest of the painting, although in more muted forms. And the rest of these parasols will simply be white. So these parasols will add some nice touches of color to the painting and by keeping them light you can add some colorful shadows on them as well. But I'm going to let this dry first before I paint these shadows over them. Now I'm filling in the shadow areas of the roofs with ultramarine and a touch of amber. Using a spray bottle for a bit of extra texture and keeping things wet. And I started out with some very heavy pigment to make uh, the mixture really dark. And then by painting um, with a bit more water next to it, you get this sort of gradient. So I can suggest a shadow coming from the left with the rest of the roof being a bit lighter. And also the roof of the middle building. And I'm leaving out highlights for the windows on the roof by painting around them. And here's a nice trick for you. You can use a spray bottle to add a bit of texture to suggest uh, roof tiles. By simply getting a little spray bottle, put some water in it and then spray a bit of that into the wet wash. But 
don't uh, spray too much of it because that might ruin the wash. And the roof next to that as well. And you can see how I'm painting around these, what are they called? These, uh, these sort of windows. And while this wash is still wet, I grab some thicker pigment and I simply put that into the existing wash to create some nice shadows. And you can do this same principle in reverse order. So here for the wall of the building I'm starting out with a fairly dark wash. Painting around these windows again. And then as I progress I add in a lighter mixture with more water. And that forms this gradient from dark to light. So I'm giving the illusion that some of the lost sunlight is falling on the left side of the building while leaving the other half in darkness. And as long as this wash is still wet, you can do the reverse again. And here I am painting from light again to a more shadowy area. And here I'm painting negative shapes around these parasols and also around the tree. So you can see the tree standing out from the building. The building in the middle also needs some more definition, but this one is slightly more tricky. You can see in the photo that it has lots of small highlights in it. And whereas the other building is mostly brick, this one has a lot of natural stone in it as well. Old Dutch architecture like this has a lot of ornaments and patterns that break up the brickwork. And to paint all these lighter ornaments is very tricky to do in watercolor because it breaks up these larger shapes in lots of little shapes. And you have to paint around all these highlights. And this is a lot easier to do in oil painting where you can simply paint the entire wall first and then paint the lighter stones over it. If you want to do the same in watercolor, you would have to mask these areas first with masking fluid. Or you would have to use opaque white paint such as gouache to paint over it. Now, I don't really like working with masking fluid and I use it sometimes, but this is just too much. Now, gouache is an option, but you won't get the same vibrancy that you get with watercolor because gouache is more opaque and chalky. So in this painting I went for a detailed approach so I'm simply painting all these details largely as separate shapes. Now if I were to go for a more atmospheric approach in the future I will paint all these large shapes as one wash and then use gouache to suggest some of these highlights and see how that works out. So yeah, I think Dutch architecture especially is extra challenging to paint with watercolor. Now painting this middle part with the tower. And the right side of the building is receiving a little more shadow. So I'm painting that with a darker mixture. And you see I'm painting these sort of stripes because all the brickwork is broken up by these white natural stones. The building on the right is now mostly done. I'm giving the city hall the same treatment and painting darker brickwork in between these lighter ornaments. You can see the level of detail that I'm working in. I just I just like all these old architectural details. It's it's very nice to to paint that and get familiar with it and learn how how these buildings are made. There is some light coming in from the 
blinders. I hope that doesn't distract too much. I'm fast forwarding here a little bit because I'm painting very slowly, very carefully. Some of these rectangular shapes here as well. Painting all these different different levels of the facade. It it really is work of art, these these facades of these old buildings. So I will spare you all of these tiny details by fast forwarding them quite a bit. So here you can see I'm painting all these small window panes. And again for the larger building, painting these window panes separately. And now some details on the steeple of the tower, making it quite a bit darker. Now the tower is a bit light overall, so what I'm going to do is paint the second wash over it to make all of it just a bit darker. But be careful with doing so, you can easily create these dull muddy colors. So you can avoid that by using the, the same or similar colors painting over it and keeping things still fairly transparent. And also be mindful that watercolor dries up a bit more lightly. You have to reckon with that. So here I am painting over the trees with a, a darker wash. And you should try not to fiddle too much with this. And we want to keep some of those highlights, especially around the edges. So the background of the painting with all these buildings and the trees, it's now largely done. So we can now move on to the middle ground, where we find the, the actors, the people on the terraces, socializing, enjoying their drinks. And here I'm painting this figure, this man who's walking past the terraces. And then we move on to the left. And here I have drawn a couple of figures. They are sort of half standing, half sitting on these bar stools. You don't have to follow the reference exactly. You can give, you can change the colors of their clothes uh, however you like. You can change the their appearances. You and I mostly paint people in such a way that you couldn't recognize uh, a specific person. I'm making this parasol in the middle a bit darker. Give it a bit more shadow and the light, as I've seen, is coming from the left. So that side will still remain light. You want these nice colorful shadows and underneath the parasols we need to add some more shadow. And all the people uh, sitting under them, they are basically sitting in the shade of these parasols mostly. So we can simply cover them with one big wash and then add some more details later to, to define the people, the, the tables, the chairs, all of that. And we want the shadows, the shadow area to be nice and colorful because these parasols are colorful and the light is going through them, which, which colors the shadows underneath them. And now we're going to do something quite dramatic. So I've picked up some dark pigment with my brush and now we're going to make all these long cast shadows really add some more drama to the painting and cuts up this, this large light area. And by these shadows, the viewer can also see clearly where the light is coming from. And I'm making these shadows very long because 
I want to give the impression that the sun is already quite low. So you're not seeing these thematic shadows in the reference photos, so I'm really making these things up as I go. And that's the hard part of it, you have to try to get to look at realistic, but without having a good uh, reference. So that's, that's not easy to do. And I have to be careful, I don't paint them too dark, so I lift some of the paint with my brush to make them a bit lighter and I try not to, to make these shadows uh, dry up in a way that I don't uh, find satisfying. So I'm working now with quick and bold strokes, painting the shadow in the foreground. And now we, we really see the foreground coming apart from the rest of the painting. And I'm creating these darker shadows using mainly ultramarine with some neutral tint added to it to make them a bit extra dark. And uh, pure ultramarine would be a bit uh, too much. So the neutral tint helps gray it down a bit. And I'm extending this shadow further onto the building on the left so that the building is connected to the ground in one single wash. And I wasn't quite happy yet with these cast shadows. It, it didn't quite feel right yet, so I decided to elongate them further toward the side of the painting. So unfortunately the uh, paint had already dried up, but I think I still got away with it. And often you also have shadows within shadows, so now we have a darker part and a somewhat lighter part, and I think that actually works okay. Making the building on the left a bit darker as well. And now we really see the painting coming together. We're really starting to see the bigger picture now. And we see that vision realized that we planned ahead before we started this painting. So it's starting to look pretty nice now. So the terrace area is still a bit empty, so now we can add some more of those details. Or the jewelry, as Subukvich calls it. So I'm keeping these figures fairly simple and painting them mostly as silhouettes here. No need to spend hours and hours painting them in complete detail. It's it's nice to leave some open for a suggestion. And here I'm using a, a different brush. It's in a Skoda Perla. It's a, a bit stiffer synthetic brush, which is nice for painting some of that detail work. And you can grab a lot of paint with it. So it's more suited for, for tiny details than for larger washes. And now with some darker paint, I'm painting these tall bar stools beneath the figures. Parasol is a bit flat still, so I'm adding quite some more shadow to it. That's better. So now I'm painting in more of these figures and tables and chairs making things darker as I go along so yeah a lot of time goes in painting those final details sometimes it can take more than the rest of the painting even and there's still this open area in the midground so I'm going to break that up um, I'm going to add a door here uh, in the facade and by doing that I also define the head of this person that is sitting there. Painting some extra bricks on the left side of the facade and 
the whole facade itself is is really uh, a thin layer of, of stone that is attached to the front of the building to make it look nice. It's a bit dark, it, it stands out a bit too much, so I'm making the, the lower part a bit lighter by lifting off some paint. Now mix them up some more dark and now it's time to define some of these little details in the tower. So I'm, I'm just sort of dry brushing that on there. These little lines and this Escoda Perla brush is very good for that. You can really pick up a lot of that paint with it and make it really dark. Yeah, there's a thousand little details in this subject and I'm not going to show all of that. That will really be too much. But here I'm breaking up this middle ground area further by adding some doors and windows to the building in the middle. Trying to keep things a bit atmospheric. And the building on the left that frames the picture can also use a bit of detail, but I'm keeping things a little bit rough because this area of the painting is not really in focus so much. I want to keep the focus on the square itself where all the action happens. Now to add some of those vertical lines, I use a, a bit weird brush. It's a combination of a sword brush and a rigger brush, but it kind of works. A little bit more detail in the middle area and we're really almost done. And now with this really weird brush again, I'm going to add a bit of texture to the ground because we do have those nice light and shadow effects but it, it still looks like a very flat and smooth surface. Well, in reality, um, this whole market place uh, it uh, consists of lots of small cobblestones, so we re we want to have some of that that stone texture in it. And now with the same brush, we add some texture in the shadow area as well. I'm trying to find the right balance here because too much and the texture becomes uh, obnoxious and stands out too much but too little and it, it appears too smooth. So we have this, this strong shadow and we have this strong highlight area right next to each other. So both need only just a bit of texture, just enough to give that uh, suggestion. And now there's tower of the city hall is not complete without a flagpole. So I can't really see much else to add at this point. So now I place the signature, trying to keep it somewhat consistent across my paintings. And there we go. And there is the final painting. I introduced some extra light, creating the ambience of a city square in the warm light of evening. And you've got the color parasols, the people on the terraces. And now let's compare the finished painting with the reference photo again that we started out with. You can definitely see the difference in the amount of light between the two. 
So the photo is a lot darker and I think a bit more boring as well because there's little contrast in light and dark. The only real contrast is between the sky and the rest of the scene. But I did see potential in this photo, but there was just too little sunlight left. Now the painting definitely breathes more light and it has this warm evening glow which is expressed in warmer colors such as cadmium orange, yellow ochre and burnt sienna. So I think the way I invented the lighting in this painting looks convincing. It's probably not entirely realistic but what matters is that it looks good. Uh, some of the shadows are perhaps a bit longer than they are in real life but I made them longer because I found that it worked better with the composition. So if you want to invent your own light but you are not quite sure how to do that for a specific photo then here are some extra suggestions. You can make a few pencil studies first and try out different combinations of light and shadow. And also you can look at other photos and choose one that has the light that you want in your painting. So whatever lighting scheme you are looking for in your painting, take into consideration the composition as well. So maybe it is better to sacrifice a little bit of realism if that benefits the composition. As long as the result looks convincing and it looks realistic. So I hope you liked this watercolor demonstration and I hope I have challenged you a bit to deviate a little bit more from your reference photos. So maybe you still have a photo lying around somewhere that you would like to paint but it isn't quite ideal. So maybe that photo deserves a second chance. And even the best reference photos are rarely perfect. There is almost always something that can be improved, whether it is the, the lighting or whether there's just an annoying car in the scene that you want to get rid of. So the goal is always to improve on the photo, not to copy it literally. The photo is just a guide or a tool for the final painting. So if you want to see my paintings, you can also go to my Instagram and follow me there. And you can also find the link to my Saatchi Art Gallery in the description. And you can even buy paintings there. And if you like to see more of these watercolor demonstrations, then be sure to like this video and subscribe. My plan is to not only post these long form uh, watercolor demonstrations but also now and then post some shorter videos uh, with some useful tips and tricks that help me create uh, better paintings and that may also help you create better paintings. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and we see each other next time. Bye bye.